Huawei Mate 50 Pro. This is the company's latest flagship device under its renowned Mate series after two full years. Yes, if you recall, I reviewed its predecessor, the Mate 40 Pro in somewhere around December 2020. And it was a stunning device with one major flaw, the lack of GMS. So what did Huawei accomplish during these years? Is the software situation better now? Is the Huawei Mate 50 Pro the better camera phone available for Android? Let's check that out in this video. In addition, I will be comparing the latest flagship to the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, which is my daily driver for almost now six months. Trust me, the battle between the Samsung and Huawei will be exciting. So without any further ado, let's get started with the Mate 50 Pro review. So what's in the box for us? Along with the Mate 50 Pro, the retail package also includes a charger, a cable, manuals, a case and a SIM ejector tool. Also on top of the box, there is Kunlun Glass logo mentioned in the center, which we will discuss later. Keep in mind that the S22 Ultra's package lacks charging brick. So the Huawei Mate 50 Pro looks and feels like a ultra premium smartphone. The Mate 50 Pro isn't just a standard slab of metal and glass, it has some unique features like the curved glass that covers its 6.74 inch screen and the circular space ring that holds the back cameras. The front camera is in a notch at the top of the screen. Yes, we are here with a 2022 device that comes with the notch. All right, so we have the orange version with us, which has a beautiful back made of a vegan leather. It reminds me of the Mate 30 series, which I reviewed a couple of years ago. You can check that out in the video. Also, the link is in the i button here. The touchscreen covers is made of Kunlun glass. Huawei claims that this glass has 10 times better drop resistance and has a 5-star glass drop resistance certification from Switzerland's SGS. Coming to the back design, the space ring is a large centrally raised circle that appears to house four rear cameras. There are three plus a laser autofocus system. The power button and the volume rocker are both on the right side, leaving the left side free. The top side houses an infrared sensor and a microphone, while the bottom side houses a SIM slot, a USB-C port and a speaker grill. Overall, I am loving this design. As you all know, it's a subjective matter, so it's up to you to choose between the S22 Ultra and the Mate 50 Pro's designs. Coming to the display, the Huawei Mate 50 Pro's display is simply stunning. But that shouldn't be a surprise. Since the first Mate, the company has added high quality panels. This one has a 120Hz refresh rate and you can select dynamic to switch between 60, 90 and 120Hz as needed. 2616 by 1212 resolution on the 6.74 inch AMOLED panel yields a pixel per inch of about 428. The display supports the P3 color space, HDR10+, and 10-bit color palette with more than 1 billion colors. But in this case, the Galaxy S22 Ultra would take the lead here as it has a QHD+, and an LTPO display that can refresh from 1 to 120Hz. Also, you would enjoy a larger, uninterrupted screen space as it has a small center punch hole in comparison with the Mate 50s big notch. There is also a fingerprint scanner under the screen and a face recognition system that uses the TOF. Both are functional but we prefer face recognition because it is quicker and more precise than a fingerprint sensor but another case I speak about is when it's a low light condition definitely it's going to be the fingerprint sensor. So this gorgeous display combined with the stereo speaker makes its best for media consumption. This speaker deliver good treble and bass. They deliver plenty of volume when combined. Sadly, there is no 3.5mm audio jack, but the Mate 50 Pro is Widevine L1 certified, meaning OTT apps like Prime Video and Netflix should play in full HD resolution. Sadly, you won't be able to use the standard YouTube app in the direct way. We will come to that story in a later of this video. Yes, there is a method where you can use the Google apps in this phone, which I have covered it in the later part. Speaking of the performance, the Mate 50 Pro has the latest Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, which is a 4G version made just for the Mate 50 Pro. 
it comes with a 8 gb of ram and a memory of uh, 256 or 512 gb the onboard storage can be expanded using the proprietary nano memory card slot when it comes to performance it is pretty standard with the kvr that the mate 50 pro struggles under sustained load benchmark scores are about the same are those of the other snapdragon 8 plus gen 1 phones but performance drops noticeably during the stress test and long periods of heavy use and said that real world performance is very quick with no delays slutters or lags we have discussed the benchmark figures before and while they are useful in some cases they don't always paint the complete picture the Huawei Mate 50 Pro lacks of 5G connectivity must be resolved for some it may be a deal breaker but there is a lot of debate about whether 5G is worth it for the smartphones you probably won't notice any difference with the 5G for what it's worth the later can be slower and less reliable particularly outside of major cities i strongly advise you not to focus too much on the lack of 5G as it does not make a significant difference at this time as i'm personally using a 5G service in this country and i always prefer to use the 4G service since the battery consumption is more and the data consumption also becomes more in based on some situations in terms of performance the mate 50 pro would take the lead because it uses the overclocked version of the 8th gen and is manufactured in the tsmc process which should help the chip performance efficiently before moving to the exciting camera segment if you are enjoying this video so far so don't forget to giving it a thumbs up as it takes hours and hours of work to bring the video to you the main attraction on the today's show is the Huawei Mate 50 Pro's camera system for the first time ever Huawei has gone with its own imaging software Xmage after departing from the Leica brand also the firm has implemented one interesting piece of camera hardware on the main lens which it calls the ultra aperture xmage camera but before we got too far ahead of ourselves let's go over to the specs for the number nerds out there on the back of the mate 50 pro is a triple camera system that includes a 50 megapixel ultra wide aperture camera a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 64 megapixel telephoto camera with 3.5 optical zoom and 10x hybrid so that we have gotten that out of the way we can concentrate on the samples and they are fantastic daylight images have a lot of details at a wide dynamic range and the colors are also fairly accurate there isn't a noticeable difference in tone between the different sensors so switching to ultra wide or telephoto won't make the picture look yellow or purple The telephoto periscope camera is also excellent and the 3.5x shots are extremely detailed with little loss of clarity. This holds the true for 10x hybrid zoom samples as well. Huawei's noise and detail preservation algorithms are excellent but the post processing makes the magic here. Where the Samsung S22 Ultra has a better color grading and saturation. Since the Mate 20 Pro there has been a dedicated macro mode that uses the ultra wide lens to capture the close ups with some patience and practice and sometimes the use of manual focus you can get pretty decent macro shots and it's a useful creative tool to have Huawei phones have always been good at taking photos in low light and the Mate 50 Pro is no different the RYYB sensor is extremely helpful and some algorithms are active in the background even when night mode is turned off Despite the fact that I am not a professional photographer, I try to compare some of the S22 Ultra shots to those taken with the Mate 50 Pro and the image from the Mate 50 Pro are brighter and more crisp whereas the images from the S22 Ultra have less contrast. In terms of night mode, it takes approximately 4 seconds to stitch together some frames and and increases the detail colors and dynamic range. In reality, the turning off night mode results in oversaturated colors making night shots look better. However, whether you use a night mode or not, low light shots will not disappoint you. The Mate 50 Pro can record videos in 4K at 60 frames per second and the results are quite good. If you choose the 1080p, you can use the image stabilization which is hybrid of OIS and EIS and works very well. 
while recording in 4K, you can zoom in and zoom out all the way from the ultra wide lens to the 10x hybrid zoom. But the transition between the lenses is fairly obvious. Also impressive is the 13 megapixel front facing selfie camera. It offers a variety of focal lengths to make it easier to fit your friends into the frame and is an excellent exposure judge. You can anticipate a lot of detail and true colors. The contrast was unaffected despite the wide dynamic range. The selfie camera can record up to 4K footages that is well stabilized with a consistent, well exposed and detailed subject. Additionally, the background is nicely rendered. This selfie camera sample has a 22mm field of view, which is what I expect most of the people will be using. To summarize, the Mate 50 Pro is a very capable camera phone that ranks alongside the big boys. Speaking about the software side, as we all know, the phone lacks Google mobile services, which will disappoint most users. But yes, there is some workaround for that, about which I am going to speak in the later part of this video. But you have to hold for that. Okay, so long time users of Google's operating system will not need to make any major change because the Mate 50 Pro software is based on the open source of Android, on top of which the EMUI 13 is built. The new EMUI 13 has tons of great features. Stacking widgets on your home screen is a useful feature. There are fantastic and open new possibilities. App Gallery is your go-to app store here. You can also use other trusted app stores like the Amazon App Store, APK Pure, etc. to get the apps. Also, Huawei has implemented its proprietary search called Petal Search which helps in finding apps from trusted source, finding hotels, finding routes, etc. However, keep in mind that while it is simple to download apps from any source, if the app relies on GMS, it may no longer work. If you have any questions about the software or the device, please leave them in the comment section or join our Tech and Spice Telegram channel, which I have linked in the description below. Moving on, you can use a search widget on your home screen to scan QR codes, identify objects and your camera AI and more. For more advanced features like super device to work with other device, you need to sign in to your Huawei account. Another feature I loved in Huawei EMUI 13 is the super hub feature which lets you long press any of the text image or file and simply drag it to Superhub, where you can paste or share it to any app or connected device. Overall, the software is polished, but you must abandon clinch to old GMS habits will bring you sadness and frustration okay so when it comes to google and huawei you will know already what's going on with huawei and we don't want to go back to that story but in the past i have made many videos on google app side loading but later every method started to be bad finally many relied on gspace but as days passed gspace started to show more ads now you have a similar workaround but in the name of gbox Yes, the method is simple. You just need to download the Gbox app and install it. In some regions, it's available in the app gallery, but if it's not showing for you, then you go to the link in the description and download it. Once you open the app, you will be greeted with the user agreement, which you have to click agree. Then you disable the battery optimization. Now you are at the main screen. First and foremost, click the check button and then click enable. You will find some settings to enable that are shown on the screen. Once it's done, you come back to the home screen. Okay, here too, for some people, the Play Store app appears, but not in my case. However, don't worry, simply press the Google app that is shown on the screen and it will take you directly to the Play Store. 
from here you can install all the apps once you install them it will ask you to create a shortcut on the desktop that's it you have the working google apps now The Mate 50 Pro has a 4700mAh battery which is much bigger than the battery in the Mate 50. The Mate 50 Pro's battery charge quickly enough at 66 watt using the supported USB adapter. 50 watts wireless charging and 7.5 watts reverse wireless charging are also supported. Overall, I am impressed with the Mate 50 Pro's battery life. And it's even better than the Samsung S22 Ultra which has a larger 5000mAh battery. Although fast charging is personal preference. The verdict on the Huawei Mate 50 Pro is the same as always an excellent smartphone let down by the absence of Google's mobile service and 5G. That's doubly disappointing because the Mate 50 Pro would be on par with the best offering from Samsung, Apple, Google and Xiaomi if it supported GMS and 5G. Even with the above problems, we don't think many customers will be willing to pay the higher price tag. However, we know that some customers, especially photographers, might be willing to do so. Anyhow, on the screen now, you can find my pros and cons of this device. Alright, I hope you like this video. If yes, then hit the like button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also press that notification bell to get more updates on my video posting. Alright, so I'll meet you in the next one. Until then, you're watching Tech Spice. I'm Manish. Bye.